what a year 2020 was and what a year 2021 has been so far. The villain this year has been COVID-19, with the situation being exacerbated by world leaders such as Bojo the Blonde Mop. PM Boris Johnson has been clear on his government advice. We've been told to stay at home, but go to work. Some news outlets have claimed that Boris Johnson has lost a bit of weight over the pandemic. Might be because he's laying off those puddings. Parliament, on the other hand, has not been so lucky. The Brexiteers getting their just desserts in the form of a Tory government, aka an eaten mess. COVID-19 has created issues for everyone in the world even Jack and Jill, because they couldn't get up the hill to fetch a pail of water, because this would involve moving from a Tier 4 to a Tier 2 area. Luckily, they managed to hitch a ride from Dominic Cummings on his way up to Durham. In America, Amy Coney Barrett has suggested the best way to fight the pandemic would be to reflect, stick to the Ten Commandments, and then forgive the virus. Speaking of religion, the Pope has been conducting regular masses over Zoom. Unfortunately, however, none of the clergy have been receiving the body of Christ as transubstantiation cannot cope very well with buffering. Elon Musk has been blowing up in the tabloids almost as frequently as his SpaceX rockets. Recently, he's been wiring the brains of monkeys. I guess, just like me, he's a daydream believer. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Verdict News Review. I would like to start by asking all team players to unmute their mics, and I'm going to quickly introduce them to you all. We have got four people playing, um, and we have divided them very cleverly into two teams, named Team 1 and Team 2. Team One is hosted by Anton Doyle. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be fooled by his posh facade and gentlemanly nature. Although he does look like an extra from Bridgerton, Anton is a very intelligent human being with a quick witted brand of humour. Anton is joined today by Leone Stussy, who on the surface looks like she's better than everyone else. But when you dive deep into her personality, you realise that she is, in fact, better than everyone else. <laughs> Team Two is hosted by Ed Dempsey, who can only be described as an avid reader of intellectual publications such as The Sun and The Daily Mail. Finally, we have none other than the president of Mank. Who cares? I know. Dan Carnegie, who narrowly lost out in auditions for Harry Potter to his half-brother, Rupert Green. Dan is the most charming and polite person you'll ever meet, and it is a privilege to have him representing Mank on this news review today. First, I would like to start by bringing in the news that GameSpot investors have had something to say to Wall Street. Also in the news, a picture of a top EU advisor waiting for Boris Johnson's Brexit deal has surfaced. And Donald Trump's top scientific advisor gives him a COVID-19 vaccine just before Donald gets back to his daily routine. Round one is going to be called the Guess the News Story Round. I have a picture for you contestants and the first team to buzz in with what they think the answer is will win. And the first team to say the most wittiest thing they can about this news story will also get a number of points. Here we go. What's the news story, gentlemen and lady? Is it to do with the economy? Yes, well done, Ed. Well done. Yeah. What, what specifically to do with the comedy? Well, I, I assume it's something to do with GDP. I assume falling as well. Yeah, you can warm it, Leone. Anything? Well, an aggressive skyrocket down in the GDP numbers, seeing as the rocket is plummeting towards Earth rather than away from. Yeah, okay, that was much more technical than I intended for that picture. I literally just typed in GDP and uh, pulled up the first picture that I can see. But yeah, yeah. Anton? Uh, GDP P plummeted 2.6% in November. Yes, well done, well done. Point, point, point to team one. Uh, and why, why do we think this is? What, what do we think about this news for you? Do we think, think it was the Tories was the cause of this? The COVID was the cause of this? What do we think? It was the Tories' ingenious plan to go into another lockdown. Or do you not agree with that, Anton? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let the viewers um, <laughs> decide that one for themselves. All right. And what about you, Ed? What do you think of the economy? I mean, uh, you, you're planning to be a lawyer, but surely you've got some commercial awareness. Do you think that there's, uh, there's, a, there's a quick solution or do you think it's just going to be a steady increase again over the next couple of years to get back to where we were? I, I mean, I, I think it's going to be ruined for a while, to be honest. Good thing is that the that Boris Johnson's party, the Conservatives, tend to be more economically focused. I don't know whether or not that'll help in the long run, but, you know, it's not much you could have done with the coronavirus setting. Eat up, help out was probably the best, and we all saw that did, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine what that percent would have been if um, Jeremy Corbyn 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> would have been in office. But but hey, yeah, let's not let's not speculate. I'm politically neutral. Dan, yeah, this is going to affect jobs of uni students in the future. This, of this number here. Do you think? Yeah. Well, I don't, don't know if the GDP is going to affect jobs of uni students in the future. I think uh, it's definitely going to go down before it goes up again. I can see this happening for a number of years, maybe take us three, four years to get out of this uh, um, negative GDP and recession and maybe even double dip recession. But who knows what will happen? I'm sure in a few years time, things will get better. And I think once we end lockdowns and uh, coronavirus is all sorted, I'm sure GDP is going to go through the roof because people are just want to get, get, want to get out there, spend as much as they can, go on holiday and enjoy themselves. Mm. Yeah, well, I think we can all we can all kind of hope so for our own uh, employment virtues in the future. And um, just for the audience, does, does anyone want to say what they what they want to do when they when they have graduated with the with their law degree? Since we have got law listeners, and Song Dempsey, uh, what's the plan? Well, I plan on being um, either a, a crim criminal barrister or maybe a public law barrister. Hopefully. Um, acting in inquiries um, into certain things. So, fingers crossed, all going well. Yeah, I mean, for the regular viewers, if, if there are any watching, um, <laughs> I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think you can tell from the Walter Myers episode, I think it was, that I want to be a solicitor, probably commercial, so 2.6% hit in one month. Probably not the best, yeah. but you know, it does mean that the future's going to be booming. Everyone knows that when it goes up again, Everything gets better. So, yeah, unfortunately, uh, the filthy rich people are no longer filthy. They're just rich. <laughs> um, now, moving on, we're going to play our one minute jibber jabber round. This was actually the creation of Ed Dempsey. I wouldn't um, say creation. I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited for this. Um, so, basically, you're going to have the choice of two categories. It's got one, two, three, four, because I couldn't be bothered to edit it, edit it and I could only come up with two categories. But you're going to have two categories to choose from, and you've got to talk about that, you know, theme or genre for one minute without, what is it, Ed? Hesitation, deviation, repetition. It, because Linus has done such an excellent job of um, describing it, if anybody's watched just a minute before, it's on Radio 4 on a Sunday, I think. What you do is you talk for a minute without deviating, hesitating, or repeating. Obviously, there are some words which you have to repeat for the purpose of the um, minute but you can't deviate or hesitate from the topic. So if somebody's talking goes, well, I think Boris Johnson did things like this towards coronavirus, and then um, 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 that's a hesitation, so you automatically lose. Yeah, I explained it so well that Ed's just gone and re-explained it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would like yeah. to point out as well, you've very missed very familiar with, uh, I'm very familiar with this, because I tell all the ladies I just expect a minute, so... <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Those, Dan Carnegie, those welcome. Those of you watching, those words now immortalised on Spotify and YouTube. <laughs> mm. So I'm going to ask a question So to decide which team gets to choose first out of the two topics. And then obviously you're going to have to nominate one, one of you to, to do the round. And the question is, what is the best movie in the world? And I'm going to basically just decide who I think is the closest to the right answer. Okay, well... The best movie in the world's got to be Shawshank Redemption. I mean, it's the highest rated on IMDb, and it's got Morgan Freeman in, and need I say any more? Are you one of those people that just goes on IMDb and goes, oh, I'm going to watch this? It's got have, you seen it? have you seen it? There is no other film that comes anywhere near it. It's phenomenal. The amount of, the amount of twists in it and the storyline is just fantastic. I, I, I don't think there, there are any twists in George Ant Redemption. You didn't know until the end that he was escaping. I think we need to pick Linus's favourite film. And based on how he's dressed at the moment, I'm going to have to go for Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anton, what are you saying? Uh, I'm going to go with more, um, the, one of the original uh, Wall Street film with uh, Gordon Gecko. Um, with Michael Douglas, yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, Ed really took it there with Wall, St with Wall Street. I mean, that out of the park. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say Linus, maybe you're a bit on like the more sensitive side. So maybe you enjoy a Luc Besson film. So maybe maybe you'll enjoy the fifth element. I don't know, maybe, possibly. <laughs> A little bit of a little bit of you know funky fresh Mila Jovovich. I think that you would enjoy that red hair. She would fix you. Yeah, you're all wrong. My favorite film is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But Dempsey, I was say that as well. but Dempsey, Dempsey, you you can have that because you were very close with the Wolf of Wall Street. I do love the Wolf of Wall Street. So, do you want to pick the topic for your team? Diversity of the Oscars. That does not necessarily mean what country is winning um, race uh, gender it can be like the diversity of the films in the Oscars. Netflix versus cinema is your second choice which one do you want to talk about for a minute straight okay okay Dan what are we thinking because I might nominate you for one of these you might not what sorry I might nominate you for one of these because you're an excellent Ooh. orator <laughs> um Okay, do we get do we get given a question or do we just have to chill out? No, you just got to talk oh. about it for a minute. Okay, I've left it pretty broad, so you should be fine. Okay, I'm gonna go. For, I'm, I'm gonna like to pick uh, Netflix versus cinema. Good choice. Okay, I will start your minute now. Go. Okay, so why do people suddenly all move towards watching Netflix? They haven't they haven't wanted to leave their house. Obviously, with lockdown and everything, cinemas aren't open. But the second cinemas go open again, bring your friends and get to the cinema as much as you can because there's some great films. James Bond is coming out, has been delayed for the third third time and it's now getting released in October. Well, you can't watch that on Netflix. I mean, Netflix is one of those things where it's great if you want to take a girl back to your house or and you want to just chill, but you don't get the same intimacy in your room than you do in the cinema. I mean, what's better than having thousands of people watching you make a move on a girl at the cinema? It's uh, it's priceless, you know. Five you got to do the, the old, old lean and then over with the shoulder, and that it, you know reach well, for well the popcorn. Done, Dan. Well done, Dan. That's it, mate. Well done. When you're saying you don't get the same inti intimacy, you know, in the cinema as you do at home, or well, are you talking about the movie or the girl? <laughs> I'm just talking about public affection. All right, nice, nice, nice. Well, that was all right, mate. I think, you know, Netflix and cinema is, is an interesting one. Has everyone else like me just scoured Netflix over the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah, I finished finished about three series in one day watching a series. Watched The Queen's Gambit in a day. That was that was yeah. a brilliant series. That was really good, yeah. That was a good, that was a good series. Mm. I, um, yeah, I... I don't like this top 10 most viewed, the, the Netflix top 10. I don't like that. I haven't, I haven't trusted it every, every, ever since that. 365 days was, was number one in the country for like three weeks straight. I mean, it's just soft porn. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> I would have thought <laughs> you know that, I mean? that was, that was 50, shades, 50 Shades of Grey equivalent of a TV series, wasn't it, really? Yeah, but it was worse. <laughs> I can say you watched it. <laughs> and, and, it, and it, I swear it wasn't a TV series. It was just a dragged out film. It was shocking. <laughs> but yeah, well done. Um, now, Leonie and Anton Steen, that leaves you with the diversity of the Oscars. Who's going to talk about that? You know, I would love to, uh, as Ed nominated uh, Dan, I think it's only fair to go for the, uh, my uh, learned uh, team member, Leonie, as she's so eloquent. <laughs> And uh, you know, you can think on her feet. Excellent. Learned, learned colleague, yeah, anyway. We're not in, we're not bank backbenchers in, in the House of Commons, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give it to right. the white lady. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that that does have a nice ring to it. Right, Leone, are you ready? Diversity of the Oscars in three, two, one, go. Inherently, the diversity of the Oscars, I mean, comes down to what do people like to watch? And the problem being that the Oscars take place in America and what people like to watch in America is um, fundamentally different from what we like to watch. To go off of what Linus said, I mean, 365 days is a category in and of itself for people to enjoy. And I'm sure the American public found it a lot more amusing to watch what I would argue is just actual porn, not even soft porn on the big screen. Um, we can see that by the fact that I believe there are three or four Fifty Shades of Grey movies out on the market. But when we talk about diversity, yes, an American lens, I mean, the Parasite interviews, I don't know how many of you have seen those, where a white man asks a Korean-born native, why is your movie not in English? 
And the man has to go, well, you could just read. <laughs> so frankly, if diversity inherently is based off of the American public's interest to watch something that goes a little bit deeper Five than porn, seconds. I think we're going to lose hope to ever see something more diverse than, I mean, The Wolf of Wall Street. Well done. Well done. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. Yeah, I, yeah, I, um, some, someone said to me the other day, I said, um, yeah, I, I can't watch Parasite because I'm dyslexic. And I went, okay, well, why is that? And like, the words will, will go too fast for me. And then the next day I, I came in, I saw them watching um, K-dramas. You know, the like the Korean yeah. Love Island on Netflix. <laughs> and I went, that's all in subtitles. <laughs> you looked up and went, yeah, but slightly different. And I was like, okay, mate, okay, okay. Anyway, yeah. brilliant. The next round is one I'm really excited for. Um, it's called the What's Going On Here, Man? round. Um, and basically, you just got to talk about these news stories. So I'm going to start with team one. Uh, let's do the furthest to the right. What, what's that? What, what do you think that's about? I want you to talk very generally about it as well. Um, Biden being inaugurated and laughing at Trump's childish nature of not turning up and flying away in Air Force One to um, Frank Sinatra's, um, I don't know the actual uh, name of the song, I, I like, um, I do it my way or something like that. Yeah, my way. My way, that's it, yeah. Yeah, well, I think Donald Trump does it any way that gets him kind of attention <laughs> and clout. Uh, what, Dempsey, what do you think, do, what do you think Donald Trump's, uh, uh, Joe Biden's looking at there? What, what, what would you, if you were to say something comical, what would he be laughing at? Uh, I mean, there's definitely somebody holding up that photo of when Donald Trump's, um, let's call it a toupee, was going like that in the wind and he looked like a Labrador that had just come out of water. Um, <laughs> it's definitely that. Or it's, it's got to be that time he was holding up a chart that he drew, scribbled a little bit on extra for the tornado. I mean, and there's many things that you can pick from. It could be a collage. <laughs> I think, I, I, yeah, I think yeah. he was being flashed at. I think that's why he's smiling so much. He was being flashed at. Yeah. I'll, I'll come get you later, Melania. <laughs> <laughs> Leone, anything to say about that future? I mean... Arguably, it's the day he found out that Donald Trump had a Diet Coke button in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, has anyone seen the um, Alec, Alec Baldwin's recreation of Donald Trump on yeah. Saturday Night Live? Yeah, I think I think that's that's fantastic. I think it's really fantastic. I, Donald Trump's advisors must give him so much advice. Well, I know I know you don't really need to be a seasoned politician to actually become president. That's not what I'm saying. But he's just so, I can't say that, but he's so, so, you know what I mean? And I just can imagine him just going like, you know, coming up to one of his advisors and they're talking about the economy. He's just come up with this like hand-drawn bar chart. You know, like, like all these scribbles. It looks like a four-year-old's four written it. He's just like, yeah, I think we should do this. And then they're just, <laughs> just, just shut up, Don. Does anyone know what the picture is about below the cars that are flooded, so the one below. Is it um, it's a man? Not, it's not a guy on the verdict team that we all know is a big Tory. <laughs> oh, it's not that. It's not that. It's not that. Behind the cameras. Is it a man wants to get a tattoo of Boris Johnson but accidentally got Gollum? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It is a man actually got a tattoo of Boris Johnson, but... Yeah, I'm going to give you a point for that because that was quite funny. Uh, would you ever get a tattoo of your favourite politician, Anton? Um, <laughs> um, well, my favourite politician is quite a uh, controversial one, so yeah. I'll probably get it somewhere. Who's that? Who's that? Pardon? Who's that? Um, oh, it's not Maggie, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Blair tattoo. No, 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 not Maggie. No, he's just got a poster. He's got a poster <laughs> on his bedroom ceiling. <laughs> I mean, I mean um, it is Maggie's greatest creation um and that is tony blair tony uh, blair mm. oh i i love tony blair as well he's my favorite prime minister in british history actually yeah, he, 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 he's Rock yeah. yeah i love Blair. and uh, yeah it's not a very flattering tattoo is it 
I mean, tattoos, like, especially on like big blokes, you know, got muscles and that, they look pretty hard. But if I saw someone with that, I would not mind getting in the in the ring with them. I'm going to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Uh, uh, Boris Johnson must have some charm because he's he's married enough women and had enough children for it to be evident. But I mean, even there, they, that that's just mean to him. I mean, Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson hasn't got charm. Boris uh, Johnson's got one table at the Ritz that he can always sit at. He's got a lot of money, so it goes money Ritz back to Bojo's two month affair. <laughs> he's got his current wife, court case gets married and then another court case and that that's really how it goes i'm pretty sure but but yeah um leone would you get a tattoo of your you know your favorite um prime minister or not if they look like bojo i'm gonna be honest i don't think the tutu is the problem i think your reference picture is the issue (laughs) like i'm gonna be honest he looks angry he looks so he looks like he's about to be milkshaked he's probably just been sent a picture of someone pissing (laughs) on a boris bike (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my really God. but yeah okay so the the picture above boris johnson is it um scousers accidentally drive through a river trying to reach a chicken shop <laughs> <laughs> no no it's not but you definitely get a point for that mate 100 uh <laughs> It's what Birmingham looks like in my dreams. Um, <laughs> wet, wet. <laughs> um, no, no. What, what, what is it, Dempsey? Come on. It's got, it's got to be about the flooding that's been going on after. Um, was it Storm Bertha or something like that? Yeah, I think it was Bertha. All the flooding that happened. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a good pulling month for any girl called Bertha, unfortunately, because everywhere got flooded. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, I don't know if that's an overly exhausted list. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, mean, I, I, imagine no, I imagine no month is a good pulling month with a name like Bertha. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, people. I'm only joking. If you are listening and you're called Bertha, it's, it is a lovely name. But Dan <laughs> will drop his Instagram in the chat. <laughs> DM him. Um, sure. Hit, uh, me up, hit me up if you're not called Bertha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you you'll see him in a man is being overly promiscuous to everyone everyone in this <laughs> Um so yeah, we've got flooding. I mean flooding's terrible in England, especially. I mean they're, they're experiencing it now a bit, I've heard again. Um but they we've got the snow at the moment. Um Yeah. So yeah, but what is this last picture? It's um, is... it's an advert. it's an advert for Russianwives.com. <laughs> No, and and it's not it's not Dempsey's dream girlfriend either. Um, <laughs> um, I'm Anton. gonna I'm gonna take a punt at sex dolls. Yes, yes, but what's the story? I, I imagine he's married her. <laughs> he's he's hit the nail on the head. Yes, this is the news that an American man has married a sex doll called Bertha. So Dan doesn't find a fit. <laughs> um, oh, I thought it was an EDL member. Yeah. Similarities. No, no. It's it's uh, it's it's Donald Trump's lawyer. Um. <laughs> yeah, we've we've all seen that Borat scene. It's very similar. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think of this? I mean, it is quite worrying. It is quite worrying. Although I do know people not in this call that would. Um, but it's still quite worrying. Still quite worrying. I mean, I can think of many Tory Tory. Um, Tory MPs that actually look like sex dolls with shaved heads, but I'm not going to go there either. <laughs> um, what do we think of this new story, Anton and Leone, Team One? You know, I think it just reiterates Shakespeare, Shakespeare's point that love has no bounds. Yeah. yeah. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Fonder, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Absence of movement in this case, but... <laughs> yeah, ab- absence of movement. <laughs> I had a joke lined up for this, actually, but I can't tell it. It's a real shame. <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, I just think, I just think, uh, if she does get the COVID vaccine, she will deflate quite quickly. So I yeah. imagine it uh, won't be, won't be yeah. too great for the husband. <laughs> yeah, she'll get get in the NHS and, and get jabbed, and then there'll be a quick trip to Argos for a bicycle pump. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's very terrible. 
been um, obviously it is really odd. Leonie, what do you think of this? Have you ever seen a situation like this? I mean, if you can't find it, make it. And he's just he's really taking it out of pocket there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, this is this is beautiful for people who don't understand what consent is, because I mean, a doll can't say no. Do you think that this? And I've got to be very careful here. Very. Careful. Oh God. Do you think this plays in with um, a bit of the kind of non-binary affection uh, news? You know, kind of like you, you can be attracted to a car, you can be attracted to this. I mean, obviously, this, oh. do I call it a thing? I'm not sure. This thing looks like a woman, so it's slightly <laughs> different. But do you think that people are maybe advancing sexuality? And do, do you think it's gone too far? Or do you think it's not gone far enough? Or what do we think of that? Do you think that this is... Next level. I mean, this is just what Dan Carnegie would have ended up being if he weren't charming. Realistically, he's just a very sad, poor bloke. And, and, it, and it's where it's where you know, you know it's still talking about me now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> smoke, Jesus. <laughs> mate, you've just been brought oh, the smoke, Dan. Dan, have you got a reply to that, mate? I've got no reply. I'm just going to take that one on the chin. Yeah, good lad. Good lad. I mean, p- people dating sex dolls and stuff is well established. I mean, if, if we're talking about weird... Yeah, loads in Birmingham. Loads. I, I won't hear any bad bad talk about Birmingham. It's a lovely place. Um, home of the greats, George Cabri, Edward Dempsey. Um, <laughs> Birmingham got their sex dolls. <laughs> but but I've, I've read stories about people people that have much weirder sexual attractions. I, there's a whole subcategory called dendrophilia, which is people who are atta- attracted to trees. So I, I think in the hierarchy of things, sex dolls is pretty low down compared to tree. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard one where, um, uh, you know, people, um, uh, there was this woman on the news who was attracted to a rock. And I'm like, well, I love Dwayne too. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it's really unusual. I mean, have you heard of any other objects? I mean, there's a, there's also that story of people eating things. There's that condition. Yeah, it's called isn't there? Pika. That's it. Where people eat anything around them. Yeah, yeah no. Um, I I think this is kind of different. I mean, two very different acts being performed. Um, <laughs> I assume anyway. But yeah, no. I I don't think it's wrong so much as it's not right. <laughs> yeah, Pika. Pika's that one I've heard of. Char, Char yeah, it's where they, it's where they like eat every, everything around them, isn't it, Pika? I mean, I think uh, Charlie uh, Sheen had it. Charlie Sheen had a similar thing, but he just got an STI rather than indigestion. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't think it's everything. I think there are specific cases like um, people eat hair follicles, or I mean, they have whole TV shows on TLC in America. There are people that eat chairs, eat styrofoam. There's one about some people drank magic markers. Apparently, people are now eating beans on Weetabix, according to Weetabix. <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably the weirder than eating a chair. I think I'd rather eat a chair. Beans on Weetabix? I'm not sure beans if that would work. Beans on Weetabix. What do you mean, I mean it would work? It's uh, it absolute. wouldn't work. It wouldn't work, but Weetabix tweeted that they've put some Heinz beans on their Weetabix, and apparently it tastes great, according to Weetabix. And it's just caused a massive backlash. No, yeah, that sounds terrible. It makes no sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just ridiculous. What did everyone think of that GameSpot uh, news story while we were on it? I, I didn't write it in, but I wanted to mention it. I found it very funny. Does everyone know the ins and outs of that? Yeah. 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 thought I it mean, was there. Uh... Yeah. And is anyone here invested in the market at all? Not in GameSpot, but just in general. No, I'm, I'm starting to. I'm starting yeah, to yeah, I'm seeing a little nod, nod there. It, yeah, um, I mean, God, do I want to put this out there? Well, okay, classic site trust fund baby, of course. Um, <laughs> there yeah, is yeah, the best yeah, yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> a classic trust fund baby uh, portfolio, but... Um, Sounds yeah, like no, I have Trump a lot of. Rich. <laughs> no, he got rich by a small loan of a million dollars. That's a bit different. This is a bit different. Small, yeah. yeah. Um, you can no, clear, I... clear like uh, you know, three hundred people's university. 
Definitely not. <laughs> no, don't test me on the maths. Leonie, I never <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. That was close enough. Really that. I saw I saw Ed's brain taken away then. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, it'd be more like 50, probably. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the ballpark's a bit off. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Ed. Name every state in America in alphabetical order for us. I mean, I... Maybe save that for another podcast. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll save that for a podcast on learning lists. Save that, That's save that, for Sa- save that for Saturday night at Remy's. Ed. There's plenty of girls who would love to hear I, that. I don't know what. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been fantastic. Um, unfortunately, we have just run out of time, but I would love to leave you with the news that a man's wife of a man's wife dies of COVID after a vaccine. <laughs> and Matt Hancock goes on live TV after a meeting with Pretty Patel. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>